Hey there, and welcome to another episode of the CouchCast podcast. My name is Noe. And I'm Caleb. And today, folks, we have a special episode for you. We will be interviewing a very special individual by the name of Lucid. What up? <laughs> nah, you didn't. You didn't want to say anything past that. Just what up? <laughs> I, just, I don't know what to say other than what's up. Well, we're doing. I'm doing fine. I can't say much for Caleb. Caleb, how are you doing? Ah, uh, great. Great. <laughs> great. The first interview of our new podcast. Right. Oh. Yee. Yee, yee. So I have absolutely no idea who Lucid is. I've never met him before in my life. He he said he was a rapper. I met him at um Kmart before it closed, and he said, "Hey, I want to talk to you." This is the route we're going. And he's just been chasing me ever <laughs> since. I. I guess I'll roll with it. Yeah, I was in hot pursuit. <laughs> oh, fucking pursuit of the chase. Yeah. No, all jokes aside, folks, I've known Lucid for a very, very long time, but I am not going to say his first and last name due to copyright or something. I'm not sure exactly what the... what the I, um. I don't think you can copyright a name. Uh, it is. Yeah. It is. It's copyrighted. Um... I am sure his producers, they put that on hard hard lock, and all of the uh, people with his name are being sent to YouTube, jail, audio. I don't I don't know exactly what goes on, but that, YouTube folks, jail. YouTube jail, folks, and that's why we have Lucid on the show with us today, so he can tell us all about the music entertainment industry, or entertainment industry as a whole, uh speak a little bit about his mind, and then just join Caleb and I in a lovely bit of bullshitting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, first off, I guess we should uh, learn what made you want to get into the music business. So, from a young age, like, I used to want to be a trick shotter um and like you know on call of duty and you know do a bunch of trick shots and like the final kill cam and that was always like my favorite thing to watch but i'd watch a bunch of montages on youtube and they they would always have really cool background uh music and one day i was watching a montage and i found that uh uh logic he was rapping over a montage that phase did and i was like who is this guy and then i started looking into him and he was a rapper and was one of like my first big inspirations in the music and after that i was 12 at the time i kind of ended my because I used to go by the name of Blue Nax and try to, you know, trick shot and make montages. But then I went by Astro because I wanted to start, and I started recording songs on my, uh, on my Kindle Fire. <laughs> on the Kindle <laughs> Fire. <laughs> on my Kindle Fire over that's YouTube. That's top of the line. Yeah, that, yeah, that's top of the line recording audio right there, I imagine. Oh, it was it was god awful <laughs> you might have been better using the the nintendo ds at that point <laughs> yeah ever since then my first motive of it was to make a few songs to put over a montage of mine but then i really fell in love with how music is made and making music in general um first it was mainly rap now it's kind of a mix between rap, rock, pop, 
indie. I don't even know what you call my genre anymore. It just sounds indie. Cool, so I fucking make it. <laughs> yeah. What What is considered indie music? I'm. I don't think I've ever heard. Well, I have heard it, but like, what does that fall under? How does your music fall under indie? I mean, I get the rap. I mean, like, I mean, I feel like that's a little self-explanatory. Yeah. <laughs> so, indie music is like alternative kind of music like music you wouldn't normally see on or normally hear on the radio or normally hear uh you know flipping through spotify or flipping through apple it's like it's almost underground but it's still mainstream and it's like got different flow patterns and uh different cadences that people use over like really alternative like people throw together you know reggae cadences on some soft rock and roll drums that's i think that's what would be considered kind of indie alternative i i guess i i i understand the more alternative i didn't realize indie was another form or another way to call uh alternative rock that, or that's like the gray area of music but gotcha I don't know. I, I consider it my music right now alternative because I put like I grew up you know, I grew up listening to Logic and that inspired my uh, my rap rap background but also Eminem I come from a heavy you know Kanye, Kid Cudi era like the early 2000s Eminem um, and then but growing like growing up really young I was into like Beastie Boys, Blink One Eighty Two. Um, what's a couple other bands I listen to? Britney uh, Spears. Occasionally, <laughs> occasionally. <laughs> um, no, but Blink One Eighty Two, Beastie Boys, uh, ACDC, and like I always loved um, like hanging around Mr. Nowy. Uh, you know, listening to a lot of rock and a, a lot of our area, because if, you know, people didn't know me and Master Noe and Face Bake live in the same area, and a lot of our area listens to rock. So I grew up around rock and roll like all my life, but always had like a rap. Um, you were more of the rap. outsider, you know, people. People yeah. were really like it was the younger gener our our generation that was kind of dabbling in the rap, and like listening to it. And the the older folks they weren't really keen on it. You know they heard swear words in a song, but you know you listen to rock. You listen to '80s rock nowadays, and if you actually listen to music, like you know you listen to rap and you listen to the lyrics and what they mean. You listen to rap song or rock songs, and ninety percent of them are about having sex. And how hot women yeah. are. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Yeah. But it's okay, though, because it's rock. But it's okay, yeah. though, because it's rock. But if they talk about that in some other form, we don't want it. But I feel like that's, like, the same excuse of, like, when you, like, hear, like, an, an older, like, grandparent or older person say something really controversial that's not allowed. And you're like, it's just from a different generation. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> So having that, you know, Kanye West, 808 Heartbreaks, Kid Cudi, like, humming, auto-tune, while having a hardcore, like, rap background, like Eminem, Logic, um, I sometimes listen to Tupac, Biggie, just, like, really hardcore rap, and then, you know, gr growing up against, er, uh, growing up around rock and roll all my life, I kind of just, like, binded the two, and then binded like pop music with I guess you can consider the auto tune because I learned my voice is really flat, but that's a whole nother conversation. But <laughs> um, yeah, so and like I grew up as I got into my elder years, you know, around like sixteen, I started listening to Juice World X, um, like Ski Mask, like you know, very melodical rappers, and that just and having like a rock and roll background kind of like helped me because I I like I like listening to rock like when I'm with Noe I love listening to rock and roll but 
you know, binding the two genres that I really like. And I just, I, I like it. I, that's my style right now. Is what. So that's how I would consider it falling under alternative. You know, you do have a really great style. I mean, like, I don't listen to rap. Like you've said, I'm more of the rock guy. And I guess a bit of alt or slash indie now that I know. But, uh, yeah. um, yeah, I like a lot of your music. I mean, if that's a no-brainer. Um, <laughs> but uh, we, I know Caleb's listened to a bit of it too. And I do like how a lot of your new music now, it has that, like, almost like flashback to some of the music that I listened to. Like, I, I think it's sampling, right, is what it's called. I know you don't sample many rock songs, but in your past stuff, you have sampled yeah before yeah like even in unreleased music as well yeah like back then i would always do hard hitting boom bap beats like i'm from the streets and i'm gonna kill you kind of beats but like and like sampling like vocals like some choir or some shit that make it sound dark or something but nowadays what i'll have like producers do is throw on you know guitars and like guitar riffs and uh guitar melodies just so i can sing rap over them with auto tune <laughs> that's, that's basically what i do <laughs> so i had a question for you actually when it came to music making i know caleb he was telling me the other day that he had he was conjure, uh, conjuring some lists up you know to that i didn't do that he, that he didn't do i guess <laughs> um one of the main questions I just kind of came up with while listening to you. Um, so you know how many rappers, you know, they all have like a tone, like for a certain time period. Like you'll see like a lot of music comes out in like, how do I want to phrase this? So like you'll hear a lot of love songs coming out by artists in like kind of a pattern. Like you'll hear, uh, I don't know, uh, Taylor Swift will put out a love song. Ariana Grande will put on a lo- uh, put out a love song. I don't know. You know what I mean? You see, like, and then, like, the next week, it'll be, like, or two weeks from then, it'll be, like, sad song by Post Malone, sad song by somebody, sound song by somebody. When you post your music, do you ever follow a, is there a sort of trend or pattern when you post music and, like, what your song is about? You know, back when I first started making music, I did follow a pattern, which is kind of, like, what a lot of old heads if you want to call them that would call biting sound but really music isn't biting sound you're just creating something in like sampling as we've talked about but in my older music like if logic or like if eminem would come out with a you know hard-hitting fast-paced song like lyrical spiritual miracle i would you know do the same thing and come out with and try to be as fast as I can but nowadays I just make music out of how I feel in the moment like I had a pretty not a pretty rough day today but I had a okay day today and I felt like making like a fucking screamo song just to scream my heart out but yeah I just I make music strictly on how I feel rather than follow a wave now Okay. So, with your music, I haven't listened to all of your songs, but I've listened to quite a few. And going from your first song to your newest release, how much better do you think you've gotten since your first one? Oh, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, shit. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that one. <laughs> If the viewers and the audio listeners want to go on my YouTube and scroll all the way down to Fiji, and listen, to that, <laughs> and listen to how fucking god awful trash can that is compared to what I just dropped, uh, the Far Away EP, which I think I kind of tried to auto tune sing on Fiji, but it really didn't work out. Excuse me, um, and it's just. Yeah, I've gotten a lot better. I've invested a lot of my money 
in a lot of time like there was a lot of time that a lot of times that i went like no sleep like i remember i took six months off of making music around 2019 2018 and just studied the music the music industry and what goes into it like when i was first making music i didn't have an audio interface i didn't have a pop filter i didn't have good studio monitors to listen back and like mix my shit all i had was a microphone and a laptop and some headphones but i made it work which is it's more problem. that's more than other people can say you know I mean, I know everybody starts somewhere, and everybody starts with, like, nothing, essentially. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want to sound, like, you know, so personal, because, you know, I have no idea who you are. But I remember watching you, like, I don't want to say, like, grow up in the music, but, like, you know, back in eighth grade, watching you make music was, like, kind of like weird you know like you, you, it literally just looks like you're just re like talking into a microphone and then you're mixing and mashing on like garage band or something and it's like <laughs> some stupid shit like yeah that. and it was i don't want to say it was silly but like it's you know it was, it was weird you know you know and i've never seen anything at that point I, i'm you know i'm just playing xbox and trying to figure out what my geometry quiz is and you know etc but it's it's just kind of crazy to see it now because again i have no idea who you are but when i see you in person um <laughs> recording it's like you have a whole dedicated setup and each it's like like a machine like a machine yeah definitely um yeah like now i have an audio interface that i spent a couple hundred dollars on i have a microphone that I spent a couple hundred dollars on, a desk, I spent a lot of money that's has gone into this. I have an Akai MPK Mini 2018 edition, but I haven't touched this thing for a while because I haven't, like, produced music. I've just been, you know, writing and recording. But I've put a, poured, like, my entire adolescence into it. I think if, if Noe were to talk about it more... I think you can go back and before I was even a teenager, I was always making music. It all started at like a summer camp. That's yeah. that's where I can say. Um, kind of switching, uh, not want to say switching gears, but uh, going back to something you mentioned earlier. Um, I graduated with Lucid here, and uh, a hint back to Fiji. One of the members in our graduation actually had a speech and mentioned oh, that yeah. some of us won't quit when we go to college or when we graduate high school, and then some of us won't quit when we make it or until we make it to Fiji, which, funny enough, yeah. is a line from the song Fiji. From the trashiest song I've ever <laughs> But Fiji was a banger at the time, and... Oh, yeah. It's safe to say that, you know, even Caleb, Caleb, you were singing, I will not stop till I'm living in Fiji at one point. <laughs> oh, yeah. I loved Fiji. I loved a lot of your starting music. I love a lot of your music now. It's just all. Yeah. Okay. If you, I have a question for the, the interviewers. If you had to pick one of my new That's songs, not how this works. I'm joking, oh, okay. I'm joking. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Right. <laughs> no, go ahead, go ahead, sorry. So if you had to pick one of my new songs to recommend to any of the listeners out there right now, new songs, um, what would you recommend? <sighs> new How songs? New are we talking? Yeah, like wh where is the where is the line? Like I think like eighteen years closer and up. I consider that like my prime period right now i actually like 18 years younger um, yeah so like that's hard years, you know that's like time bomb icy red shadows riot uh far away you could also put um <sighs> you could also put maybe 17 in there Oh, I can't recommend 17. Oh. 
we'll get into that after this. I I don't want to say like a recent song, but one of my favorite songs by you is M16. Oh yeah. I love M16. I play M16 in the car. Even when I went to school the one day, I blasted M16 and woke up everybody in the damn neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd go with uh, Icy Red. Icy Red. I like Icy Red as well. Almost like High C Red. High C Cherry is the sequel to that song. <laughs> you guys can continue. I just wanted to see that. <laughs> you just wanted to wanted to hear what we'd recommend. <laughs> uh, yeah, like if you were talking with the viewers or if you were talking with anybody random on the street and you were like hey go listen to this kid this song's really good i was wondering what you would recommend i don't need to talk to people and recommend when i can just blare it from my speakers like that asshole <laughs> <laughs> but no i i, I would recommend i would definitely recommend uh m16 for sure Before M16 was to Tokyo. <laughs> no, it was MP5. No, I mean like my favorite before M16 was to Tokyo. I, to Tokyo is good. I can't <laughs> believe Tokyo is one of your favorites because that is another trashy song around. <laughs> I just liked the beat. I really did the sampled beat. It was. Yeah. That song was... It got awful? Is that what you're going to say? <laughs> yeah, god awful. I don't think I've ever heard anybody, like any musician, like, talk bad about their own music. I don't want, like, I know you don't talk about bad, bad about your recent music, but, like, to hear your older songs and be like, wow, that was shit. I don't think I've ever heard any musician oh, yeah. ever be like, I hate that. I wish I never recorded that. <laughs> No, it's not that I regret recording it because it would, it was definitely fun in the moment and I could see how far I've came. Like I've contemplated taking down all my old music and contacting my distributor, just being like, you know, erase it all. But then I thought to myself, you know, I see myself in like five years, I can look back and see how far I've came. And there will be diehard fans out there too that will listen to that and be like, man, this is sick. OG Lucid. <laughs> Oh, gee, I'm sorry, Gilb, I kind of interrupted you there. You were going to say something? I was just asking if you had any more questions that you wanted to ask. To Lucid or to me? Had any off? No, to me. Oh, wait, I'm so confused. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to ask him another question is what I was going to ask you. No, I'm good. <laughs> it is all you, man, now. <laughs> all right. Let me think of some good questions to ask you. Fire right. away. So, if you met somebody who was trying to get into the music industry, what way would you go about telling them, like, what to do, how to do it, what to get, stuff like that? Okay. This is a good question because if I, I mean, if, if myself now were to talk to my uh self in thir at the age of 13 um a i wouldn't be able to afford shit <laughs> but if I, B, if I were to i would be a lot bigger than i am right now but how i would go about it is i'd say study like study the music not just the music uh itself but the music industry and how it works because a lot of it so there how i've gotten to the place i've gotten is i've gone through uh marketing agencies and you pay a lump sum of money well that's kind of getting too far if we're talking like equipment and like actually making music i would say like do what you love whether it be rock and roll rap country even 
just make <laughs> God it forbid make country. country. <laughs> God, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> things that like I like I tried to do everything that every other mainstream artist was doing to you know get big and i every artist does this because they're we're all human as artists but um i would say make music you love you love to listen to like because i can go especially when i found that out like 18 years closer and up i started making music that i would listen to and going back if you're not going to listen to the music that you're gonna put out whether it be on a trashy microphone or a four thousand dollar microphone you're not gonna like it and people aren't gonna like it and people are gonna feel that energy from that song like i remember i think the song was called oh man i think on my youtube it was called uh it was the one right before criminal mind I literally just like copy and pasted from somebody and was such a biting asshole (laughs) that I I literally copy and pasted what people were doing. Um, I think the song's called uh, Cutthroat and I love that song, but when people, when, you know, the Screamo X rap kind of came out, the heavy rap, I was like, holy shit, I'm going to copy and paste it, and I'm going to get so big. And then as as the years went on, I was only like 15, 14 at the time. As the years went on, I finally realized, I was like, I'm not going to sit back and, you know, listen to this again. Like, this song is, like, so trash. Why the hell would I make this? I don't even, I'm not even like this. Now, nowadays, if I want to make a scream song, I can and it's gonna be from a genuine place but that that song came such from a copycat place and the energy wasn't right so i was i'm not gonna go back and listen so i would say to someone make music that you would want to make and you would want to listen um that's some good advice then then i would say save money and invest and every dime you get back from music, whether you're making or whether you work a nine to five or actually making money off music, reinvest it into what you want to do, whether it's paying for studio time or whether it's actually revamping your new studio. And that's what I've done. Like, I think on my TikTok, I posted a video. I've had the studio for two years and now I'm revamping everything because I reinvested every dime I had plus a little bit of my mainstream money into it. And now that contributes to the high quality sound I have today. But I'm not gonna lie, it's not like I have Justin Bieber vocals, but I definitely have some mainstream vocals now. Now, once you get past all that and you have a good music standing, you're making music you like, you're making music that sounds good and is high quality, it all comes down to marketing. And how I got so big, artists will pay like websites um, to bot views just to get, you know, a stance, but not have a real fan base. Now, what you do is you go through uh, real marketing, you know, websites who are going to pitch your songs to big playlists. Uh, and those playlist curators will listen to your song and be like hey uh i really like this guy i'm gonna put him on my thirty thousand viewer uh either podcast radio or playlist i mean i can't tell you the the amount of times i've talked to people and or just studied the music industry and how many times people go to find new music through other people's playlists and that's i mean i did heavy um music promotion and marketing and nothing nothing was botted i did haul a lot of money into that 
nothing was botted it was all real um money into shadows and that it's my biggest song to this day it's got a hundred thousand on soundcloud and like twenty thousand on uh spotify and after you got that man it's really just working towards you know the next step up which is you know going on tour and you know signing to a record label but that's what i would recommend that was my you know pattern obviously i had ups and downs when making songs like uh that i didn't want to make or i was making shitty content because uh i didn't have the money and frankly i didn't give a fuck but <laughs> that's what i would say that's a good answer yeah um that was so long. I'm sorry I talked for so Yeah, I, I have so many more ideas to talk about just from that, but I know we'll extend past our, our hour mark. But, you know, it, it's it's great to hear that you're so dedicated to your fan base. Um, and what I was going to say is, knowing that you have such a dedicated fan base, I know you also have a few, I don't want to say haters, but those who try to compete with you. Now... I've seen them happen. I've seen them happen before, and I'm not going to name any names because they're not on this show, and nor do I want them to be like, oh, I'm going to do my rebuttal against Lucid. I'm going to rap right here in front of the show. And I'm like, okay, but uh, that's not what we brought you in here for. But uh, <laughs> so that, that's my impression of them. You know, they, they flecked up their I did my I did my time. I served it, G. And I'm like, okay, but you haven't. <laughs> you really, you, you haven't. Yeah, you you haven't. <laughs> but on top of those hater, or I don't want to. I'll just we're calling them haters, but the, I guess. You but call them haters. yeah, these haters. You have come out on top with your own rebuttal songs, and with you know clapbacks and etc. And on top of that, back in the diss track era. Back in the diss track era, and on top of that, not even responding to them and being adult about it, I guess. Um, I could talk about a story if you want me to. A little story that I had with this dude. Who, me and him were passing diss tracks around. If you want me to talk about it, I don't want to go over over your time if you don't want to. Oh, I mean, we have more than enough time, but... It's up to you. I, yeah, go for it. Caleb, you okay with that? Okay. Yeah. All right. So back in the diss track era, this dude and I was like rapidy rap rap kind of rap, kind of music. And this kid from school than me, because like we also have rival schools. Being, I just graduated high school, so I'm not that old, but. Um, this other kid from this rival school was a rapper too and he just called me out one day on this song so I called him out and then I called him out and I called him out and then finally we like he did one more on me I was like okay this is too, this is too much it's wasting my time and I cut him off well a couple weeks passed people were like hyping up a freestyle battle and I was all for it Back in the day, I could freestyle for days. I mean, I could still freestyle now. You got Freestyle Fridays. Yeah, freestyle Fridays. But uh, this kid, I met him. I, I did a sport at his high school, and he came up to me. He's like, bro, we got we to gotta keep beefing. We got to keep beefing. We got to, you know, merge our fan bases off of beefing and and, just, it, and I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? I was like, A, why the hell are you talking to me? B, <laughs> why are you wasting my time? And C, you beefed with me over fake beef to get clout. And being that I only had like 130 followers, he had like 200 at the time and like maybe 50 plays a song. So it was like no monetary gain even if I were to do that, it was just wasting my time and wasting my energy when I could be studying. And this was before I studied music. And I was like, 
you know, bro, fuck you. I am out. <laughs> <laughs> well, he literally admits right there, too, that, you know, I, he was, I want you to beef with me so I can get more views. <laughs> it basically is what it boils down to. That's funny. That is hilarious. Oh, man. So, I got one more question for you. Yeah. Uh, you had that concert, right? Oh, yeah. So, I, I had a few or two. Well, for your first concert specifically is what I want to talk about. Okay. What was it like when you first walked out onto the stage of your first concert? man holy shit do you want me to describe like the setting or like the feeling or like both i guess i could do both yeah just if you can do both if i can interrupt okay. for a second here this is one of my guilty moments of like me being friends with lucid here is i actually wasn't at his first concert i was currently yeah, some... in disney at the time and listened throughout the <laughs> listened to the concert via instagram from some dude's phone <laughs> yes, yeah, so some dude in the crowd FaceTimed Noah or Noe and then showed him as I was like rapping in the middle of like one of my songs. It was so funny. But anywho, so when I first went out on stage, I it was I think Conflicted Envy, Summer Love 2 just came out. Um but I came out to the intro song. I, I forget how it goes because I've made so many. I forget my lyrics all the time. But it was like a hard intro song. Like, I'm back now, but a bit of bat now. Or so, some shit like that. It was fire as hell. My, like, first set. Oh, oh, my God. But I remember having my photographer. Shout out Brooklyn. Um, He did like all these photography photos for free and like sounds to me and was very nice about it um he, it was him and my girlfriend and we were i was just like they were chanting lose it lose it lose it and i felt my heart like drop to the floor but not in a bad way it was just like everything that i've been working towards and i still had so much to go i did i barely had any clap or clout but the small venue that we that we did that i headlined it sold out i mean give or take it wasn't you know a like a stadium but it was a small venue and we sold it out due to the capacity but they were chanting lucid lucid and i remember running out and just all that nervousness like left my body completely and it was like i was meant to be on that stage rapping to all these people that came to see me it was cool like my friends and family came uh a lot of my friends and a lot a lot of different faces too but it's just i think it's a a slight flex that i headlined my first um concert and my next <laughs> this is a little down the line but i one of my big goals for music is to headline a national tour and because i love performing i actually I know a guy who's actually doing his first tour with a few other musicians as well um i knew him through high school when i was just young and met him at a skating rink of all places but you know i kept in touch with him um I, I guess I could just say his name. Uh, Cody Cody Hartle, right? Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's just getting on to his first tour. Um, he's going up to Maine, I think, and then a few other places. But, uh, well, I, I, the only reason why I know that is, I you know, I see his Instagram posts every now and again, and he's dropping an album or whatever. And, uh, but he I met him at Sheets the one time, and he... Uh, he was just, he was just like, hey, I'm going on tour. Keep an eye out. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> but yeah, I guess, I don't want to say, it must be a hard thing to do, but I feel like it definitely takes a lot of time to, 
And you're uh, with another dedicated, I don't want to say music group, but, you know, kind of like a society of music composers. Uh, I, uh, I, I wish that didn't fall off, but I still keep in touch with my close friends from there. Well, that's um, good. I mean, you could even look into seeing about maybe doing a tour with them. I'm sure their pro- their producers are. They're they're actually, uh, my friend, my good friend Alfred. He owns a clothing. Uh, I wouldn't say he's a good friend, but he's like a really he's a good music friend, and he's holding a festival of all this artists like Chandler, one of my good friends maybe Hayden's Revenge. I've, I've done a few songs with them. But there we had this like little collective called End. Yeah, I, I wasn't really in it, but it was kind of like if the viewers know Goth Boy Click. But they're holding a festival, which is a two-day festival. Chandler is actually headlining it, so shout out to him. It's called Don't Kill Your Friends Festival. It's like <laughs> some hardcore rap, hey, but like some melodic rap. And I, I hope I get to see the highlight reels from the shout out to them. Hmm. Interesting. That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Well, I know one of the things you wanted to do coming on to this show. Uh, uh, Caleb, do you have anything more to say or ask? Uh, no, not really. I got all my questions answered. Uh, I appreciate you answering the questions, taking time out of your day to do so. Oh, yeah. We appreciate you being on the show, you know, at all, agreeing to it and such. Well, I thank you guys for bringing me on. (laughs) I mean, this is my, like, first quote-unquote interview podcast. Well, we're happy to have you. (laughs) Um... (laughs) (laughs) Um, one of the things that Lucid did tell us before he came on the show was that he actually wanted to plug something for his viewers. Um, he just, uh, released a new album, uh, today, actually, as of recording date. Um, but he wanted to plug some unreleased music on our show. Yeah. So, I mean, I'd like to play it through the mic. But me and Caleb talked about you editing in like 30 seconds, maybe, if you'd be down for that. But you know, yeah, you know, okay, or... I can do that. So viewers, uh, for this time period, enjoy. Uh, do you want to announce your unreleased song? You I'm wanna... not going to announce it, but it's going to be fire. You're only getting a little snippet of it, but it's going to be fire. Enjoy these 30 seconds, folks. Sneezy with the heat. Ayo, Babs, this shit crazy. Neon lights, I love these neon lights. Feel alright, I swear I feel alright. Up all night, I swear I'm up all night. Hey there, folks. And we're back. (laughs) iCarly style. (laughs) (laughs) We hope you enjoyed that little snippet. Um, Of course, you have no idea what that will actually be a part of. That's all in Lucid's secret black book. Or it's called Neon Lights. Neon, neon Lights. lights uh, yeah, That's it's about name. it's about falling in love with a dream, but being so trapped in a bad situation that you're in right now, um, and not feeling like you'll ever make it out. That's some cool shit. Yeah, that's some cool shit. Oh yeah, that sounds awesome. Can't wait to hear it. You heard it. <laughs> well, the full thing I think is what he meant. <laughs> uh, <okay. laughs> we didn't listen to it at all. 
the full thing. Yes. <laughs> after the podcast, I'll, I'll play the podcast. Oh. Or I'll send you the full thing. Well, then, I'm... Uh, Exclusive. The Lucid Exclusive, Part Two. Lucid exclusive. <laughs> yes. Oh boy. Um. I guess it's time for us to plug some information too. Uh. So, uh, Couchcast has actually been thinking about doing T-shirts of our new logo on the back and the Couchcast lettering on the front. If any of you viewers, audio or video listeners, love you both to death, um, are interested in uh, maybe even buying merch, that's along the way. But we're thinking about doing a giveaway of 10 shirts, um, close to 50 subscribers. If any of you would be interested in something like that, Caleb and I will create some sort of um, contest or giveaway program that we can get um, 10 shirts out to you. Um, besides that, that's all I have to plug. I don't have any unreleased music of my own, so. <laughs> I, I don't think I have any either. Well, if we're doing promotional shit, go stream far away. It's out now on Spotify, Apple, Music, Amazon, YouTube, anywhere. Far away by Lu- bonus track. It's fire. Lucid, Lucid's new album and new music will be in the links below. And yeah. I don't know. Do you guys, what are you thinking? Anything else to add to our Couchcast podcast? Anything for our Speaking wonderful viewers? Carly, have you seen the iCarly reboot? Re- Re- reboot? <laughs> <laughs> I actually you have. The iCarly rebuttal? <laughs> it looks funny as shit. I actually haven't. Um, my biggest thing is that Jeanette McCurdy, who plays Sam in iCarly, isn't in it, and so I've heard. Um, also, I think Dan Schneider is an absolute freak. <laughs> <laughs> All I've seen from it is the one clip of uh. Carly saying bitch. Oh my god. Yeah, and they're allowed to swear now. Instead of like little sodas they have in their hand, they have beer. It's so funny. <laughs> so they're ruining childhoods. They I see Freddy them, get intoxicated and catch an STD, and that's when I'm gonna start watching Jesus the new. <laughs> I don't know. If we can say STD on here. I don't know. We'll probably we have to... say STD. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so... I guess I should, you know, do you want to know why I think Dan Schneider's an absolute freak? Or do you guys, like, know? <laughs> uh, I think everybody knows about Dan Schneider at this point. Yeah, I mean, like, that was a huge thing. Lucid? Do you know about how freaky Dan I, Schneider is? <laughs> I, yeah, I've, I've, I think I've seen it on scrolling. Most of his shows consider a absolute fascination for feet, and the way that he goes around and like hugs and like kind of hangs on some of the uh, actresses. I don't know if there's any like actors that he does it to, but most of the actresses he uh, he acts real re- weird around with a lot of photos. But uh, no, wait, you guys were like startled when I said a lot of his shows focus on feet. Yeah, yeah, homie's got a foot fetish. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, but you haven't noticed that. That's like one of those things. Go watch a YouTube video about it. But it, it literally, yeah. it literally is just like Dan Schneider I mean, you, is obsessed with feet and like. Do you not remember the episode of iCarly where they painted faces on all their toes and then wiggled them for the mm. camera? Yeah. I do. I do remember that episode. That was fucking weird. Yeah. Well, that's Dan Schneider weird. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> I already so not gonna lie, not gonna spoil anything. I've already watched like half or a little bit of the Bad Batch series. Uh Star Wars is on Disney Plus sponsor, but um <laughs> No. No, not a sponsor. Not a sponsor. Um, We're not being paid. Uh, not not a sponsor, but uh, very good. Very, very good. You find out some canonical information about one of the characters. We uh, actually, I actually haven't watched the, the first new episode that we talked about Bad Batch. Yeah, yeah, the first podcast we uh, talked about Bad Batch. I don't know where yeah, you want me to go with that, something. but yes, we did. Really <laughs> bad, then we'll say spoiler warning. I haven't watched the but new episode, wanted... so please, no spoilers. <laughs> yeah, I haven't watched the one that came out today. Sorry, it's, you missed your chance really on talking about it on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, the canonical information is good. Go watch it if you haven't watched it. Still plugging the Bad so Batch on the, the Couchcast podcast <laughs> yet again. Alright, bye. <laughs> I'm gonna go watch the Bad Batch real quick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna no, keep it recording. I'm just gonna watch the full episode on the podcast. On the podcast? It's gonna turn into oh, a watch party. Hey, am I listed as a special guest on here? You. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, you are listed as a special guest in the Discord. That's so cool. You guys are listed as hosts. That's awesome. Um. So, folks, uh, little this will be Thursday's episode of the Couchcast podcast. Um, you'll know that because you'll be watching. You'll be it watching Thursday. it on Thursday. <laughs> um, I don't want to say we can cut it here, boys, but uh, we can cut it here if you'd like. We can. What, what time are we at? Uh, I believe we're around 50 minutes or so. We can probably do a little bit of a 10-minute outro if you'd like, but um, all I have to say... <laughs> no, not 10 minutes of, like, the couch, <laughs> but, like, just last... <laughs> uh... <laughs> you guys will be staring at 10 minutes of a couch. To watch that entire 10 minutes of the couch. Yeah, you'll get the uh, the special feature, or, like, the... Achievement unlocked. Yeah, or the, the, the bonus scene. Or if, you, or if you're a Sony guy, you'll get a trophy. Um, <laughs> I will give a bit of spoiler for next week's episodes. Um, starting next week, our newest episode will actually be featuring our new co-host. Possibly new co-host. Caleb's not too fond of the new co-host, but I'm pretty fond. We have to see, we have to see how he works out. Oh, you're giving Can away I his gender? Oh, man. I'm sorry. They. <laughs> Our new co-host on the podcast will be Tuesday's episode. <laughs> we don't know if he's going to be able to, you know, actually talk on the podcast without freaking out. He's going to talk yeah, on the podcast. We are going to... re-record. <laughs> It will be. Say? Wait, Lucid. What did you say? I said at that point you you can just cut it and re-record it. <laughs> just, wait, we just edit him out. He's sitting in the Discord call the entire time, but every time he talks, we just cut him out. Oh my god. <laughs> He'll ask yeah, like so a what very... do you think about that blank? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a very serious question. It'll just. It'll just cut from him as before he asks the question to us answering it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They'll never know what the question was. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> we have forward to look at uh, looking forward to that. I have no information on Thursday's episode though, sorry, but that that's your teaser for next Tuesday. Um Yeah, we're recording this the Friday before these videos come out, so we have no idea what's going on. If you want some prophecies, we can, you can uh, comment below and we can give you our magic orb. <laughs> you know, I will tell you this though, there will be a new episode on Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, yeah, I actually heard that as well, that there will be a new episode every Tuesday and Thursday. 
Um, I don't. Oh, I thought I saw something on Instagram saying it'd be every Tuesday and Thursday. Oh yeah. Really, Tuesdays and Thursdays? I'm pretty sure that's when we upload new podcasts. Really? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The the Couchcast. Uh, every Tuesday and Thursday. I thought there. <laughs> 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 well <laughs> anything else we want to talk about um i'm not sure <laughs> lucid do you have anything in particular you would want to talk about if this if this is the outro i just want everybody to go stream far away it's, uh, <laughs> on spotify 2000 and then on soundcloud it's at 1000 I think. Maybe. Let me check. Here, I, I got your know. SoundCloud out. Let me check, though. Uh, 1,071 on SoundCloud. Awesome. Yeah, I just hit 2,000. 2,030 streams with 12 people listening right now. Shout out to those 12 people. It's <laughs> a very good <laughs> I listened to it before the show. And it was dope. Right on. No, you should go listen to it. It's on Apple. It's on Apple, folks. On all the different oh, media platforms. <laughs> speaking of Apple, you're right, Caleb. What will be starting um, this Tuesday? Where will the Couchcast podcast be? I think uh, the Couchcast podcast is going to be on uh, Apple Podcast, right? right? Yes, sir. Starting Tuesday, we will be on Apple Podcast along with YouTube. Don't worry about you video listeners. We haven't forgot about you yet. We love you to death. Audio listeners, love you to death. Um, we will have Lucid, like I said, for the... Wait, I'm sorry. I, I was speaking so loud. I'm, I highly doubt anybody heard you. <laughs> Don't worry. Eventually, there will be video to watch. There will be. All right, folks. Uh, we'll have Lucid's uh, new music. His YouTube, Spotify, etc. <laughs> All plugged in the description below. Instagram, email, of course. Lucid. Show him some love. Show him some love. Any final thoughts? No, I just thank you guys for having me. Everybody go stream far away, and it's been Lucid. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you again. I, I gladly come back if you guys wanted me for a new episode. Okay. Maybe, maybe that'll happen. Maybe a game show episode. Oh, yeah. Oop. Did I... Oop. <laughs> Oop. <laughs> game show? <laughs> Alright, folks. a very unreleased uh, kind of thing. I'm doing unreleased stuff. You, just, you guys just plugged a bunch of shit, so... <laughs> Alright folks, like I said before, everything will be in the description below. Go stream his music. Stream our other episodes. Look out for Apple Podcasts. This has been the Couchcast Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Noe. And I'm Caleb. <laughs> and I'm Lucid. Alright, thank you folks. Thanks for tuning in. Catch you around.